Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you how you can deploy a Flask web app created using Python to Versal. If you're unfamiliar with Versal, Versal is a platform that offers free hosting for web apps and makes the deployment process very simple to follow along. So without further ado, let's begin. All right, so if you're watching this video, I assume you already have a Flask app created. For me, I just have a basic Flask application that has an index.html file within the templates directory that is returned when the page loads, which you can see right here. And this file just contains a hello world header with some additional information. I also have activated a virtual environment, which I highly encourage you to also have. With a virtual environment, you can keep track of the packages your application is using without installing them across your file system. If you do not have one, I recommend you to create one and activate it. And the commands to create a virtual environment and activate the virtual environment will be shown on the screen for both Mac and Windows users, respectively. You also want to ensure that you have installed the necessary dependencies your application needs. So this includes packages like Flask and other dependencies that your code relies on. To install them, you can do pip3 install in the name of your dependency if you're on Mac. And if you're on Windows, you can do pip install and then the name of the dependency. So to give you an example, I would run pip3 install flask within my virtual environment. And since I already have it, it says requirement already satisfied. So once you've ensured that you have created a virtual environment, and have installed all of your dependencies, we need to create a requirements.txt file, which will contain the list of dependencies that our application is using. When we deploy to Versal, Versal will need to know which dependencies are required. So we will create a requirements file that specifies the dependencies that must be installed. So to do this, ensure that you have first activated your virtual environment and run the command pip freeze greater than sign requirements.txt within your project root directory. And this command is for Windows users. For Mac users, you can do pip3 freeze greater than symbol requirements.txt. And once you hit enter, this will create a requirements.txt file that contains the necessary dependencies for your application. So if I head on over to my file here, this will include um, the main dependencies as well as the dependencies that they rely on. So for Flask, Flask relies on Jinja2, Markup Safe, WorkZoog, It's Dangerous, Click, Blinker, you get the point. And after we've created this requirements file, you're going to ensure that you have removed this debug is equal to true flag within your app.run function. So within your app, within your Flask application, you should have this app.run function here. And you want to ensure that this debug equal to true flag is removed because we are no longer deploying this or running this within a development environment. Since we're deploying to production, this is not necessary. Now, if you were to make changes to your code prior to rolling out a new update to your application, then you would need this flag. But for deployment purposes, this must be removed. Now that we have configured our Flask app, we need to ensure that we have a Versal account. If you do not have a Versal account, head over to versal.com on your web browser. Then navigate to the top right corner of the web page and click sign up. Once you've signed up, you will have to install the Versal CLI. And you can pause the video here and press play once you have created your account. So to install the Versal CLI, we must go back to our terminal here and you want to ensure that you have npm or yarn installed. If you do not have npm or yarn installed, I have a link in the description that you can access to install npm or yarn. And if you're using npm, you're going to run npm i hyphen g versal to install the versal package globally across your file system. If you're using yarn, you'll run yarn global add versal to install the package globally. Now, I already have versal installed via npm, so I do not need to run either of these commands. But if you do not have Versal installed, ensure that you do have Versal installed prior to proceeding to our next step. And also, if you're using a Mac and it returns an error, use sudo at the start of your command. So it'll look like sudo npm i hyphen g Versal, and it's the same for yarn. And this will install the Versal CLI across your file system. 
And now that we've installed the CLI and signed up, we can proceed with deploying our app. So now to deploy our app, we need to create a file called versal.json within the root directory of our application. So I'll do that by heading on over to my explorer here and then clicking new file and typing in versal.json. And now that I've created this file, there are certain things that I have to paste within this file and I'll explain to you what each of these um, mean. So I'll paste this right here. And this is essentially a versal configuration that is used to deploy a Python application. And just to give you a short summary, this build right here will specify that the main.py main file sorry, will be used as the entry point for the application with versal's Python runtime, which is at versal slash Python right here. This routes over here will route all incoming requests, regardless of their URL path, to main.py. And this main.py file that I have for my application is the main Python script that is handling all the incoming HTTP requests to the web page. And it contains the logic to process the requests and send responses acting as the core of the Python server. So now that I've given you this short summary of what this versal.json file is for and how it is necessary to deploy a Python application, we can go ahead and start deploying. So first we need to log in to the versal CLI. So you'll just do versal, dot, or versal and then space login. And once you hit enter, it'll give you a few methods to log in. So whichever registration method you use, you'll pick that same method here as well. So now that I've logged in via GitHub, it tells me that I was successfully authenticated and I can just close this tab and return to the CLI. So now that I'm back within my terminal, we can run um, versal dot to deploy the files within this directory and also ensure that whatever your entry point is to your Python Flask application, the path of that file is relative to your root directory, okay? So I'll hit enter right, and ensure that you have logged in first and then do versal space dot to deploy the files within this current directory. So once I hit enter, it'll ask me if I want to set up and deploy this um, project folder, which is called flask versal video. And I'll just hit enter to signify yes and the scope that I'm deploying to are my projects. So I'll hit enter. Link to existing project, no. The project name, we'll just do flask versal video. The directory that our code is located in, it's going to be dot slash to signify this um, directory here and all the files within it. And it'll set up the project and within a few seconds, it will build the application and deploy it. All right. So once your app has been deployed, it'll give you a few links to view it with. And you can click on this inspect link here. And once you have opened it, you should be greeted with a page that looks like this here. And if you look at this domains section here, it'll give you um, a few domains where you can view your application. And the first one listed, which is flaskversalvideo.versal.app is the main link where you can access the latest deployment of your app. So if I click it, you can see that my app is live and online. And that is basically all that you have to do to get your application running on Versal. And that concludes this video. So I hope this video was helpful in deploying your app, Flask app to Versal. And if it was, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond to you. Thank you for watching and have a great day.